Welcome to Studio One. This is what I've now called my studio. <laughs> studio One. Um, I don't know why I've called it Studio One, but it just seems to resonate, so I've called it Studio One. Uh, Sunday morning. Time for me to give you my thoughts, my insight into my thinking about all things music as they relate to me. Uh, Sunday morning rant. And it is a rant this morning. <laughs> Uh, or this evening, should I say, because at this point I should have been telling you all about my lovely new System 8 that I ordered many, 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 many weeks ago. As you can see, the System 8 will be going here, I think. I haven't worked out where it's going to go yet, how I'm going to move things around, but I think it's going to go there. Um, anyway, on Friday, today, yeah, I'm Thursday, sorry, I get a... Thursday? Wednesday, sorry. On Wednesday, I got an email from the, the toy company saying that they had dispatched my system mate. So with great glee, I said, whoopee! System mate is arriving. The dispatch note said it was going to be delivered by UPS, and it was going to be delivered by UPS on Friday. So I sat and I waited in all day Friday for it to be delivered to my home address and it never turned up. At four o'clock on Friday afternoon I get an email from UPS that says I'm sorry we tried to deliver it but we couldn't. So then I went to my front door and I opened my front door and I couldn't see any cards that said they tried to deliver. They had not run the bell and I waited in all day. So I rang UPS up and gave UPS a piece of my mind, which had words of several expletives in them, because I was not a happy bunny. I still am not a happy bunny, because having now spoken to the toy shop, they have had to recall the package from UPS back to them, and I will be getting my system at some point next week. What's really hacked me off about this is the fact that I had to wait in all day at home for UPS to deliver this package with the System 8 in it and they never even rang the doorbell. And you get an email from them saying we tried to deliver it and we couldn't. They never even rang the doorbell. I was here all day. So, UPS, what a bunch of utter... <coughs> not a happy bunny. One customer will not be using UPS for a while. You know, I don't understand it. Why can't they deliver here? Having said that, they did exactly the same last year when I ordered the Jupiter. My Jupiter 80 ordered that, got an email from them at four o'clock saying they tried to deliver it and couldn't. And when I followed that up with UPS, so this is the second time they've done this, um, when I followed that up with UPS, UPS eventually admitted that the driver had never come to my property because they GPS their vans so they know exactly where they've been. So the driver never came here. Um, but what's annoying about it, I mean with the Jupiter it was okay because I was, I was actually off for a couple of days anyway when they were going to deliver it. It didn't make too much of, a, of an issue for me. But with the System 8 I actually had to take the day off to be here and wait in for them all day. That's what's really, really hacked me off about this. You know, unfortunately, with a lot of this stuff, when you, especially when you pre-order stuff, they have to deliver it. You can't go to the shop to pick it up in a lot of instances. So I think the model is slightly uh, broken anyway. But certainly, um, so UPS, you're off the Christmas list. <coughs> Moving on to more positive thoughts. Um, so this week was, um, again, I've been travelling this week, so I um, managed to sort of bounce back to my home base in Surrey, uh, which is the UK, by the way, for those of you who don't live in the UK, um, and went to see Level 42 in concert. Um, what can I say, Level 42... For those of you who know Level 42, you wouldn't be disappointed by Level 42 in concert. For those of you who don't know Level 42, uh, one of the fastest slap bass players in, I've ever, ever seen. 
uh, very funky slap bass this uh, the the um, the bass system lead singer does. So level forty two was originally was the Gould brothers, uh, Mark King, Phil Lillop. Um, obviously, no longer that lineup. The Gould brothers left in in the eighties. It's been through several other lineups over the years, uh, and now it's really sort of back to Mark and Mark and Mike as the sort of two founder members of level forty two plus. Um, you know, a band that's been built around them. I have to be honest and say though, I'm just moving my laptop around so it doesn't go to sleep because I want that in a sec. Uh, I have to say though that you wouldn't be wouldn't be disappointed. They were on stage for an hour and forty five minutes. Really, really good set. Contained every single single that you would think of that they would contain uh, from the uh, the eighties when they were really sort of like at their peak. Um, musically fantastic. High energy show. Um, Mike and Mark have still got that sort of interaction in terms of their voices, plus the fact they've obviously got a band built around them that actually sort of complement their voices as well. Um, the other thing I would say is, I think the the drummer that is currently working with Level Forty Two was Animal in a, in a Animal from the Muppets in a previous life. I've, the bloke's hands just, he was mental. But it just went with the show. The show is high energy. The drumming was high energy. It was a really, really, really good show. Now, the other thing about it, they had a support act, and for the life of me, I can't remember what the support act's name is, and that's dreadful. I know. Um, I will. I, I wrote it down on a piece of paper so I could uh, uh, talk about it this morning, this evening. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I don't know where I put the piece of paper. So I've written it down somewhere. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, as soon as I have got the laptop here, let's see if I can find the name of the said act. Hang on a sec. Let's, let's try this. Live and interactive. Level 42. Support. Act. Dun, 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 dun. And, no, I can't find it. Anyway, I might have got this up actually, because it's the Level 42 Facebook page. Uh, uh, is it right? Okay. This guy here is the drummer. He looks like Animal from the Muppets as well, doesn't he? Hey. Um, boom, boom, boom. So, yeah. Um, anyway, support act. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say about the support act. The uh, support act. Um, are a new band. Uh, they've not been going very long. I mean, I think they've been they've been writing together for a while, but they actually haven't been touring very long. Um, more uh, and it's and it's sort of like um, West Coast swing, is what how I describe it. You know, really sort of quite good listening music. Very sort of mumbers and puppy puppersy that type of of music. Sort of not quite Beach Boys, but sort of mumbers. Um, really was good. Um, thinking about it. Uh, they sort of came at the end and they sort of gave a date when they were headlining in London. Unfortunately, I can't go to that one because I would have actually liked to come see them again uh, when they did a sort of slightly extended set because obviously being a support act, they're sort of limited to five or six songs just to sort of uh, get get the people going. Um, it's also always a bit of a godforsaken thing being a support act anyway because, you know, people come to see the main main act and they spend, you know, the time and the support act are on in the bar. Um, but hey-ho. Uh, Mind you, the other thing I would say about Level 42 is, and I, I still don't understand this, if you buy tickets to go and see a band, why don't you see the band all the way till the end? I still have people wandering out, you know, before the band had actually finished. What's that all about? Anyway, Level 42, go see them. If you're in the UK, they're on tour at the moment, go see them. If you remember Level 42 from the 80s, well worth it. The other thing I wanted to show, and this was actually the reason why I had the laptop in here, um, is a couple of weeks ago when I was in Africa, I, I came across this website. Okay, so there you can see there's the website, and it's something called Korgbot or Korgbot. Um, and it decided, describes itself as a MIDI chord controller, arpeggiator, and step sequencer. Now, I've seen quite a few videos on YouTube about this over the last because uh, I've been looking for it over the last week or so when I've been looking around for it and it actually seems to be quite an interesting piece of kit 
It's not been released yet as far as I can tell. It's still in sort of pre-production phase. Um, and what they did was the company actually funded it through crowdfunding. So they went to a, a site which was I think which is uh, Indigo, Indiegogo, which is the site I actually just showed you on, on screen. Uh, the company is called Isla, Isla, Isla Instruments, yes, Isla Instruments. Um, and there's various in, there's various videos about how they came up with the concept and how they made it. So the picture that's on screen at the moment that I just showed you is not the finished article, um, but the finished article obviously will look similar to that. Um, what I quite like about it is that you can, um, for any piece of equipment, you can just plug the MIDI, MIDI in and you can actually get it to arpeggiate based on some logic you give the arpeggiator. So rather than have the arpeggiator, so for example on the System 1, the arpeggiator is based on uh, a set of predefined presets. So on the, you know, when you want to do an arpeggiation on that, you do it that way. Um, on these two beasts, uh, this would be the Kronos, this would be the Jupiter, um, but on these two beasts, I mean the arpeggiation is just phenomenal, um, but it's quite complex, so you know it's not just a case of setting the arpeggiator off, you have to go and choose which arpeggiation you want, you have to choose the chord range, it, 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 definitely on this one anyway, on the Jupiter, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a beast. Um, but once you understand it, it's actually really good. But if you want something that's simple, if you're sort of travelling and you've just got one keyboard with you, um, it seems to be quite a, a neat device for just sort of setting up arpeggiation just to try and work things out. The other thing I like about this is, um, is the MIDI chord controller. Now, what they're saying about the MIDI chord controller is sort of say it's, it's to do with uh, like chord progressions. So, for arguments, if you're playing in C, everybody knows that you know C. It's uh, you know quite often you'll be sort of humming between C, F, G, um, uh, C, yeah, uh, A minor. Typically, are, are what are you playing around with there? I'm just trying to think of my on top of my head, and my head's gone completely blank. Um, <laughs> weird, isn't it, when you do a video to camera and you sort of start talking about something, boom, straight out. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to actually step through different chord sequences um, to when you're actually sort of building something up. And it's just the simplicity of doing it. So rather than playing it, you can, I don't know, it, it, it's sort of, you know, it's like, well, what happens if I try that? You know, and that, that's sort of one of, the, one of the things I saw. And I quite like that as a simplistic way of being able to sort of step through something. Um, I'm not really sure about the step sequencer at the moment. I've seen a couple of videos about step sequencer. It's relatively simple step sequencer. Um, how would I apply it? Well, you know, you could probably use it if you like as a step sequencer with a repeat on it, um, and use it as some sort of longer arpeggiation with um, uh, something you're doing. So maybe over two or three or four chords or something like that. I quite like the idea of it. I really do, and everything I've seen so far says it's actually a good tool to have in the studio to play around with stuff. I'm not, at the moment, I mean obviously I didn't crowdfund, I didn't know this was going to be crowdfunded, I might have actually given them some money actually, if it had been crowdfunded. The other thing I like about this company is, while they were developing the actual, so they, they basically came up with the, the whole concept of the, of the, the chord sequence, of the arpeggiator, the step sequence, etc. Um, but what they then did is they said, and then went out to the musical community and said, look, we've got this device, we're thinking about building this device. What other stuff or what things would you like to see in it? And there was a sort of blog and then there was feedback on that where people actually saying, well, wouldn't it be good if you could do this or you could do that? And some of those suggestions, if you like, have made it into the end product. So, you know, it's going to be slightly more than those things that I just read out. So... Um, I'm not sure. I like I like the idea of the of the of the device itself. It's I think it's two forty nine dollars um, at the moment is what it's being quoted at. Um, so I'm assuming that it's a US sale. Um, I haven't seen anything about UK sales at the mo at the moment. So obviously UK sales uh, with the pound being almost roughly equal to the dollar at the moment. That's two hundred and fifty pounds. 
uh, plus import plus VAT plus charges plus HM up customs and excise plus um, so yeah it's probably going to be closer to 300 uh, pound mark in the UK uh, unless there is a UK supplier for this which I haven't seen at the moment but just bear in mind I think I, I like the whole idea of that sort of little simplistic box for um, helping you muck around in a song so you might have written a song you might just want to give it a slightly different feel by playing around with the chord progressions uh, something you know I quite I quite often when I'm sitting playing around with things don't think about some of these things and a friend of mine comes along and says oh you've already tried to play that, play that. Yeah. so uh, yeah it's, it's that sort of thing other than that and my rant about UPS not being on the car on the on the Christmas card list. Um, that's all I've got. About, I've got to say this week. Um, I ha no no it's not all I've got to say. I've got one more thing to say. Um, I took some advice. I think I said it when I was on the um, on the doing my rant in Africa. So I have actually been and bought a new interface for my iPad. So this I'll be playing around with at some point in the next few days. I've also got a new lapel mic as well, which I haven't worked out how to use yet, so hence the reason why I'm still doing this um, direct to camera rather than having a little microphone here and playing around with it. That is all I have to say now. So, until next week, you know, keep playing those tunes, keep writing those songs, and I'll see you soon.